I recently set up my very own Bitcoin node called a MyNode running on a Raspberry Pi 4. This is one of several new products out there designed to make it plug and play easy to run a full Bitcoin node and Lightning wallet. This video will give a brief introduction to why you might want to run your own node, an overview of my node features, and the setup process. Let me quickly say that running your own node is not about mining. These days you need highly specialized hardware to be competitive, and this Raspberry Pi 4 will certainly not work for mining. One of the main motivations for the invention of Bitcoin was to avoid trust. And by running your own node, you don't need to trust other nodes. For instance, if the miners all decide to change the rules of Bitcoin to pay out a higher mining reward, say paying themselves 100 Bitcoins per block instead of 6.25, this would inflate the overall Bitcoin supply. But my node wouldn't recognize a block with an inflated money supply, so if one of the miners tried to send me Bitcoin to pay for something, my node wouldn't recognize the payment and I wouldn't deliver whatever they were trying to buy. This concept is called economic majority, even if a group of miners can produce a higher hash rate on a modified Bitcoin, I don't have to accept their rules. I can still vote by not providing goods and services for the coins they provide. By running my own node, I control the rules of the currency I'm willing to support. You may have heard, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. You can now add, not your node, not your rules. Beyond control over exactly which rules I want to support, another big advantage to running your own node is increased privacy. If I don't run my own node, every time I make a transaction, I have to get that transaction on the Bitcoin network. And it's at this point where my IP address can be associated with my transactions. Many wallets utilize a centralized server for this purpose, often controlled by the wallet provider. Some wallets do support a random selection of Bitcoin nodes to broadcast transactions to, but this is on the rare side. When I create and broadcast a transaction with my own node, other nodes don't know if I created it myself or I'm just forwarding someone else's transaction. Also, no centralized service can block my ability to send funds. Running your own node also allows you to query transactions and addresses privately. Whereas if I type in an address at, say, blockchain.info, they could log my interest in that address with my IP address. Moving past privacy and control, running my own node also gives me my own personal copy of every single Bitcoin transaction ever made. So I can run my own analysis, maybe to answer questions like, what days are the cheapest to send Bitcoin? There's a blockchain explorer pre-installed in my node that lets you look up transactions, blocks, and even has a Bitcoin fund page that lists interesting transactions like the 10,000 BTC pizza purchase. Also of interest is the mempool viewer, where I can see how many pending transactions there are along with their fees. This can give me a sense of how much of a fee I should pay to get a transaction confirmed in the very next block, hour, or day. I do want to caution that the mempool on your own node may not know about all the unconfirmed transactions, especially if it was offline while those transactions were originally broadcast. I recently restarted my node, and it shows a mempool of 135 megabytes versus 422 megabytes directly on mempool.space's website. Lastly, there's some software that requires a full node to run, like a Lightning Network backend service. And this is actually the main reason I got the MyNode, to learn more about the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Very briefly, the Lightning Network is a protocol built on top of Bitcoin that enables sending real Bitcoin, but instantly and for fractions of a penny. And if you run your own node, you can earn a small amount of Bitcoin by helping to route other Lightning payments and also avoid any reliance on a third party. BTC Pay is another program that requires a full node to run and is a server that enables merchants to accept Bitcoin without any third parties. For instance, at a point of sale screen in a brick and mortar store or an e-commerce site. If you're a developer, you can also interact at a code level with Bitcoin. The Explorer I mentioned before has a nice list of low-level commands like creating or decoding raw transactions or using Bitcoin D's fee estimator. One final thing, running your own node helps the Bitcoin network by transmitting transactions and further supporting its decentralization. 
Now, the major downside of running your own node is that if anything goes wrong, you have to fix it, including updating software as new bugs and threats are detected. Before I start on the tour of my node, here are a few other options you might consider. Raspi Blitz, another Pi-based node, comes with a cool mini display and touchscreen for 350 euros. Or install the open source software for free on your own hardware. Noddle Dojo is a high performance node geared around the Samurai wallet. My node, which is what I have here, was $429 with a solid state drive, which I highly recommend over the disk drive. It was extremely slow before I upgraded from my disk drive to a solid state drive. And like the Raspi Blitz, you can get the software for free and install it on your own hardware, but it doesn't come with support. Umbrel, another open source and free set of software designed to run on a Pi. They don't have any hardware to purchase, but they do provide links to all the hardware you need. I've got a similar list of hardware listed below in the description that also includes an SSD with a faster write speed. You'll also see a list of wallets on their site that work with the Umbrel node. Keep in mind that you typically use a wallet to remotely control your node rather than creating transactions directly on it. GetVoltage is a hosted solution, which means that you don't run the hardware at your house, you pay them to run the hardware. There's another product called Lightning in a Box that's a little bit more powerful than your Raspberry Pi 4 hardware. Embassy, another Pi-based software stack, $269 for the hardware and OS, or about $120 for just the operating system. It's also open source, you just have to build from source if you want to go that route. This one is interesting because they're reaching much further than just running a Bitcoin node, but also trying to give you your own server to provide the convenience of cloud-based services without trusting a third party. For instance, they include a password manager, cloud file storage, messaging services, and more soon. If you want to learn more about this concept, uh, look up Sovereign Computing. Finally, BTC Pay provides several Docker images that can be deployed on a virtual private server with one click on Azure or Luna Node, which they say costs less than $9 per month. There are also instructions for launching on Amazon AWS, Google's EC2, and DigitalOcean. BTC Pay has some great guides for choosing how to deploy a node, and if you're trying to run a production service, say, for an online e-commerce site, they highly recommend you go with a hosted solution rather than trying to maintain your own hardware. All of these are trying to make running your own node plug and play easy, but it's still very early days, so be warned you may need to spend some time in a Linux command line when things break. You can also just run the software on your main computer, but it's nice to have a dedicated machine running your node, especially if you're running a Lightning wallet on it, since you want your node available to route payments. This way you don't have to worry about rebooting another computer or traveling with a laptop. And furthermore, you want to be very careful about what software you install, because your node is handling your money. By running a dedicated machine, you don't have to worry about whether every piece of software you use on a daily basis could impact the security or reliability of your Bitcoin node. My node only uses about 9 watts of electricity with an SSD, which ends up costing me about $1 per month. Let's take a tour of my node. To access it, I go to mynode.local from another computer on the same local network. You don't ever need to plug in a mouse, keyboard, or monitor. It's recommended to use HTTPS so anyone that happened to be on my local network couldn't snoop on the contents of the traffic. This will show you some scary warnings about self-signed certificates, but that's okay since I'm just talking to my own server. Also, you probably want to make sure your home Wi-Fi network is separate from the hardline network, which you can do by setting up a guest Wi-Fi network on most routers. You can access it outside your home through VPN and Tor too. I just click on my Tor services app and then copy the Onion address to a Tor browser, and now I can securely and privately control my node from anywhere in the world. And because it has Tor enabled by default, I didn't have to change a single setting on my router for it to work. You can also use VPN, which sets up a virtual private network, making my node look like a local computer even if I'm remotely accessing it. The two main apps are BitcoinD and LND. These are backend services for Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, respectively. LND is one of the main implementations of a Lightning server, but note that other implementations exist and ship with some of the other node solutions I mentioned earlier. Bitcoin D and LND aren't meant to be used directly, but rather in the background. 
Most of the other apps and services listed here provide a friendly interface to use those backend services. If I click on Manage under the Bitcoin service, you can see some basic information, but no way to create a transaction, for instance. I need to use a wallet app for that. The same applies to LND. You can see some basic information like my on-chain and off-chain or lightning balances and the ability to generate a deposit address, but that's most of it. Let's take a look at one of the lightning wallets, RTL, which stands for Ride the Lightning. I can fund my Lightning wallet, create Lightning invoices, and send payments. See information about the network, and view reports about how much money I'm making by routing other people's payments through the network. Which, after routing 5 transactions, looks like I've earned 6 satoshis or 0.2 cents so far. Going back to the homepage, you can see the Electrum server, which is a backend service that lets me remotely and securely use an Electrum wallet from another computer or mobile device. Electrum is one of the oldest and feature-rich wallets, including support for hardware wallets. I'll briefly demonstrate how to send Bitcoin using my Trezor hardware wallet through Electrum and my node. First, I make sure I'm running Tor on my computer. Then I go to the Electrum server and copy the Tor address and configuration command. I'm going to paste that on the end of my Electrum desktop wallet shortcut so that when it starts, it connects to my own personal node through Tor rather than other random Bitcoin nodes. I'll quickly set up a new wallet for my Trezor. One neat thing, the Trezor shows a random number pad on the device so I can enter my pen without a screen recorder being able to capture what it is. Once I get my wallet set up, it queries my node with the addresses on my Trezor to see how much Bitcoin I have associated with those addresses. No need to reveal my query to any other website. Now I create a transaction and hit send, and my Trezor asks me to confirm. Electrum has created the transaction and sent it to my Trezor to digitally sign. When I hit confirm, the Trezor signs the transaction and sends it back to Electrum, which then passes it on to my node to broadcast to the Bitcoin network. Other nodes won't know whether I created it or am just passing along another transaction. I can also use the Zap Wallet and several others to remotely control and send Lightning payments. First, I need to link the Zap Mobile Wallet with my Lightning node, which is easy. I just scan this linking QR code, which is a Tor connection, so I avoid ever revealing my IP address to anyone. I believe Zap is the only Lightning wallet that supports a Tor connection on iOS at the moment. Once the Zap Wallet connects, I can spend Bitcoin over Lightning. I've already got a $5 pizza gift card in my shopping cart at BitRefill. I actually had a channel open with BitRefill, so this transaction actually cost me zero fees. But even if I had to go through a few other nodes, it likely would have only cost a fraction of a penny, compared to the average of $5 in fees that Bitcoin transactions are costing now. You can also use it to spend Bitcoin on-chain that is not through the Lightning Network. You can see that the transaction was instantly detected by BitRefill, but they won't send me my coupon code until the transaction confirms, which will probably be more than a week with the low fee I used. Both of these Lightning and on-chain transactions were completed and broadcast from my node in my house, but remotely operated from my Zap mobile wallet through Tor. As an aside, you can make Lightning transactions without running your own node, but you won't be able to receive payments when you're offline route other payments, and depending on the wallet, may depend on a third party's node. 
Getting back to the tour, I mentioned BTC Pay Server before as a way to accept Bitcoin or Lightning on your website or at your brick and mortar store without relying on a third party. I believe it started as a DIY version of BitPay. It includes a number of options like a point of service app that I'm running directly on my node. I could set a tablet up at a coffee shop and BTC Pay handles generating invoices, real-time conversions between fiat and BTC, etc. You can also use it as a backend to your e-commerce site to generate invoices. There are a couple other Lightning wallets on my node, including LND Hub, a backend for the Blue Wallet Lightning Wallet, LN Bits, and ThunderHub. ThunderHub is showing me the exact same data I saw in the Ride the Lightning wallet, but it also has some other features like a scores list ranking other nodes I might want to open channels to. Dojo is a backend for the Samurai wallet, a privacy-focused Bitcoin wallet. Further extending privacy, Whirlpool is a service that facilitates coin join transactions where you and several other people contribute the exact same amounts into a pool and then get the same amounts back, making it harder to trace ownership. Caravan is a wallet focusing on multi-sig addresses. Spectre is also focused on making multi-sig easier and unrelated to this my node, but very cool, has instructions for making your own DIY hardware wallet. Now that I've gone through a brief tour, I'll talk a little bit about the setup process. When I first turned it on, it formatted the hard drive and started a quick sync download of the blockchain. QuickSync downloads a torrent of pre-validated transactions, so this does require some trust, but you can disable it and download and validate every single transaction, but this could take additional days or weeks. It took QuickSync about nine hours to download, and then an additional three days to download and check transactions from when the torrent was made to now. While the blockchain is syncing, it's a great time to go into the settings and change your password from the default of Bolt. After everything was synced and running, I went into the settings and turned off QuickSync in order to reclaim some hard drive space and also prevent upload traffic of the QuickSync torrent. Once the blockchain syncs, to get started with the Lightning Network, you need to create a wallet. My node ships with a handy card to write down your recovery seed words. The Lightning Network synced after a few hours. Later, partly because the mempool viewer requires it, I enable the Electrum server, which took almost a full week to index the blockchain, so I recommend getting this started as soon as possible. This processing time is one of the downsides of using a very low power computer. Getting back to Lightning, to create channels, you first need to deposit some funds into your Lightning on-chain wallet, which you can do from one of the Lightning wallet apps or through the Generate Deposit Address button. If you go into the status, you can view some basic stats like the uptime and service statuses, along with buttons to view their logs. You can get a lot more detailed information from net data and glances. Another very useful tool is the Linux terminal you can use right in the browser. You can also SSH into your node and lock it down so that it only accepts connections with a given key file. There are several guides at mynodebtc.com to help you get started, although you'll need to refer to each application's own project website for detailed help and support on those. This is one aspect that I found to be a little bit difficult. If something doesn't work, it's not clear whether the problem is with my node or the application, so it can be hard to even know where to look for help. For a much more in-depth walkthrough of concepts and setup, I highly recommend the Ministry of Nodes YouTube series, link below in the description. Going back to the settings, applications show you all the versions that are installed. One of the nice things about MyNode is that the creators routinely put out new versions that include updated versions of applications, so you don't really have to manage individual apps yourself. And while this does require some trust in MyNode, the project is open source, so you can dive into the code if you want. If you buy the premium edition, it comes with a one-click update button, but you can still download and manually update new versions with the community version. That's it for my brief tour of the MyNode Bitcoin and Lightning node. I personally have found it a great way to dive into Lightning that was mostly plug and play, but has on occasion required a little bit of Linux command line debugging. And speaking of Lightning, if you're feeling generous, leave me a tip with the link in the description. 
you can send down to a single penny thanks to the Lightning Network's low fees. Please let me know if I made any mistakes or if you have any questions.